Hello guys, thanks for tuning in and today we get to catch up with one of probably America's most famous pitchers, he's from Australia as well, the MLB uh, pitcher himself, Travis Blakely, mate, thanks for catching up. Oh, thanks for having me mate. Now obviously um, my first question to you champ is, why baseball? Wow, um, well the funny story, my younger brother actually started playing t-ball, uh, we were actually swimmers growing up and uh, yeah, he started playing, but I was too old to play t-ball, and so I thought I'll give baseball a crack. You know, I'm fairly athletic at the time. I played most sports, and um, baseball was that one sport that I just could not be good at time in, time out. It was very, adver you struck with a lot of adversity playing baseball, because, you know, even in the major leagues in America, the hitters, they fail 70% of the time, and they're still considered the best in the world. So, uh, you know, that was just something that I was, it was irking me that I wasn't that good at it, and I was... Uh, you know, as you do, you just want to be as good as you can. So, yeah. yeah. So, growing up in Melbourne, mate, what, what was uh, what was school like for you? I mean, which school did you go to, and what, what area did you grow up in? Yeah, I grew up in uh, the southeast suburbs of, uh, of Melbourne, down in uh, Cheltenham. Uh, went to Cheltenham Secondary College. Uh, having my mum as a teacher in my primary school years, I was kind of just all over me about getting good grades and stuff. But uh, <laughs> didn't work out so well. Yeah, <laughs> no, it worked, it worked out alright. I mean, I came out of it in the end pretty good, but. Uh, I think the older I got and the more that baseball became a reality for me, the less the schooling kind of started dropping off a little more. And uh, I, if I could look back now, I wish I had stuck with it a bit better because, I mean, the game will chew up and spit you out in a heartbeat and what are you left with, you know? So, um, but I managed to scrape through with a pretty good, you know, I think I had like an 81, you know, which is not too bad. It's not the best, but, you know, it uh, worked out. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, I mean, during your high school years, probably even <clears throat> going through that um, initial stages of baseball, and that, what kind of challenges were you faced with? Even probably focusing more at the school. So, anything around bullying or anything like that was, was common back in the in Yeah, you know, uh, I wouldn't say I was bullied. I mean, I definitely wasn't on the in crowd. You know, that was pretty much for the footy players, the AFL and the cricketers, you know, and being a baseball player, you're a bit out of that group. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think out of since school's finished, I've become closer friends with a lot of those guys. But uh, in school, uh, you know, I had my run ins here and there with a couple of guys. But, um, you know, I think. You know, I, I think I just used that as a bit of a push to try and make something of myself in America. And, you know, the same guys that probably gave you a bit of a hard time in school were all of a sudden, you know, wanting to see how you're doing, wanting to come, when they're coming to America, they want to come to a game. And, you know, I put it all behind me and uh, yeah. go catch up with them. So, so even just uh, on the baseball side of things, mate, any injuries, any serious setbacks? Or... Yeah, you know, my very first year over there, I uh, was only 18 years old and I finished that a pretty good year and I finished off all right. And we had this mini camp after the season and uh, just throwing in a, in a bullpen, I broke my elbow throwing a pitch. Yeah, just snap the electronon right up and uh, end up getting a screw put in it. So I can't straighten my arm anymore, but it uh, doesn't seem to bother me. And then uh, in 2004, when I first got to the major leagues, I had seven games in and I blew my shoulder out. And uh, that was probably the most demoralizing injury, just in the fact that it took me 16 months before I could pitch again. Yep. And I had only been pitching probably four years at that stage, so not long enough to kind of know how I was. And I had to basically relearn the position all over again and uh, yeah. and f find a new strength because blowing out my shoulder really caused me to have to drop my best pitch. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, it just, it was a battle, you know, I had to reinvent myself and uh, was able to do that. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Um, so what would you see today, mate, is probably the biggest challenges that the youth face now compared to when we were growing up? Things are a lot different today, with social media and stuff like that. So yeah. what, what, what would you say is the biggest challenge? I think definitely the social media is a big thing. I mean, that's, uh, you get yourself in a lot of trouble on that, saying stupid things, and you know, it's always going to be there. You can never erase whatever you posted on Twitter. It's going to be there with an easy search. Um, so that's obviously one. I think that, uh, I think drugs are a lot more prevalent today. Uh, I notice that, you know, I don't really go out anymore. I'm getting a bit old for the, for the nightclubs, but you can just see it walking down the street, um, guys skipping between bars, just kind of, kind of on one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that's definitely a, a, a big factor in a, a, you know, I, you know, a lot of guys I grew up playing with fell out of the sport mm -hmm. and I come back a few years later, I run into them again and they don't even look the same. They just yeah. kind of dwindled awesome? away yeah. into, a, into a party, you know, kind of craze and a few of them managed to make it out the other end and a couple of them didn't and, yeah, yeah. you know, it's sad but yeah. it's going to happen. All right, so you're looking at your 16-year-old self today. What advice would Trav give him? 
You know what, I've, I've actually asked myself this question quite a bit. Um, I think that I coasted through my first few years in America and, and even, you know, purely on the talent that I was, you know, that was God given, you know, like I just, some guys have it, some have to work harder for it, but I think that I didn't instill a good work ethic in myself until I got to the point where I knew I had to work hard to keep a job. Yep. I think if I had been able to get that from an earlier age, I might have made an even better, you know, uh, run at my career and, uh, you know, maybe be a 10 plus year veteran in the show. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's one of those things that I wish I had have maybe worked harder and got a bit bigger and stronger at an earlier age. But, you know, you live and you learn. And, you know, I'm able, at least I was able to find that work ethic eventually. And, you know, it's propelled me for 17 years in America now. Sure, 17 years. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's unreal, mate. So, you mentioned before, so you wanted to roll off some of the clubs you've actually you played with. So, obviously, the Miami Marlins and yep. people like that you spent some time there with. Yeah, you know, I'll start from the start. I mean, yeah. I, I played for Australia under 18s when I was 17 years old, and I originally signed with the Seattle Mariners. That was on a, an extended junior contract, so it was about a six year contract. Uh, I was able to make it to the major leagues in 2004, so in my fourth season, which voided that contract and now. It made me a free agent after my, th it's kind of a, uh, complex, but you get three years on that. Once you make it to the major leagues, you get three years and they can do what they want, call you up, send you down. But after three years, you're a free agent. Okay. So uh, I managed to get two and a half years of that before they traded me to the San Francisco Giants. Um, and at the end of that year, they didn't protect me on the roster, so I became a free agent. Uh, I got claimed by the Philadelphia Phillies in a uh, Rule 5 draft, which is for those that particular year of guys in their last year of that three-year contract. Uh, so I spent a year with the Phillies, uh, and then I was a free agent. Uh, and I had a pretty average year that year, so I took myself to Mexico to play some winter ball yep. and was able to sign a major league contract with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, that lasted the, the year, and I was a free agent again. Uh, so I went back to Mexico to get another job and I signed with the New York Mets and they uh, they switched me up They dropped me down to throw a submarine right down here and it didn't work out very well so uh, they released me actually after six innings and um, Ended up getting uh, picked up by the Oakland A's Finished out that year and this is all in AAA the level right under the major leagues and uh, You know, I was just tired of being kicked around a bit. So I got an offer to play in Korea and so I took that for, yeah. for a pretty good payday, you know, they pay yeah. a lot more over there and yeah. went over there and had a good year and um, the San Francisco Giants picked me up again. Yeah, um, loop. yeah you know, so I spent three, year, uh, three weeks in the minor leagues and I was doing really well and they called me up to the major leagues and then a guy that, that was injured come off that injured reserve list and that made my spot no longer available so they dropped me through waivers and then the Oakland A's picked me up again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so then I um, actually had, that was the best year of my life. I had a yeah. great year with the Oakland A's, made the playoffs and um, yeah, probably cool. put myself on the map. Yeah. And then the two days into the season, the next season, they traded me to the Houston Astros. So I pitched there through till August, which then they traded me to the Texas Rangers. Finished out that year and again, being tired of being kicked around, I took a job in Japan. Um, that was kind of a rough year for me, just the... The whole Japanese style wasn't in my, uh, I didn't fit well with them. So uh, I uh, came back and the Giants, once again, picked me up. Uh, so I started, then this was just last year. I started with the Giants and then they, uh, they didn't have a spot for me at the end of spring. So I was in limbo for about a month and then the Miami Marlins picked me up and I finished out with them. Yeah, 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 and that cool. brings me to here. Yeah, it's where you are now. So it's been a bit of a, a, bit of a ride. Yeah, so, so, so now you're playing in Brisbane. Yep. And you've only joined the team the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so what what is it now for you in terms of where you're at in your career? So the next step is to play here, obviously, mm -hmm. and get get some get some throws going. Yeah, you know, um, normally I play for the other squad over the over the other side there from Melbourne, but um, I, I kind of had to be a little selfish, you know, them being in last place and Brisbane actually went third place when I when I decided to join them, and they've managed to work their way into first now, but. Uh, I just saw an opportunity to pitch in that final series, which is televised across the United States. And uh, that would have given me a good platform to be seen again and sign another job for next year. So, yeah, And great. then obviously the WBC, the World Baseball Classic, is has their qualifier coming up in February in Sydney. And I want to play for Australia in that. So yeah. I had to get my arm ready for that. And uh, that's what brought me here. Yeah, nice. So we obviously got the chance to meet after um, we share a passion of the metal, yeah. metal, metal music and um, after the concert Amity Affliction. And what are your interests outside of baseball, mate? Obviously music being one of them and we share a common 
interest in tattooing and stuff is that as yeah. well? So what, what, what else is there? I mean, those are two of the big ones. You know, obviously, whenever I'm having a rough one or even having a good one, music just seems to be that one place that I can go and just, you know, kind of forget who I am and, and enjoy just, you know, the crunching of the guitars, man. I'm yeah. loving it. But uh, I love, <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, I actually like golf. Uh, they look at me a bit weird when I show up all covered in tattoos, but uh, I swing it all right. Yeah, you got all right? Yeah, not too bad. I'm not a pro or nothing, but uh, I have a good round every now and again. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, and then just hitting the gym. I think the last couple of years uh, has really been, I never really enjoyed working out. And I think uh, once I, I started getting some results in the gym, that really, was something that I could, oh, I can't wait to go and lift, you know, yeah, and get yeah. that swell on, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Get, get the bicep curls here. Yeah, yeah, well, you can't do too much of that being yeah. a pitcher. You can't yeah, be too yeah. tight, but and the legs definitely, well. yeah, yeah. Um, mate, um, what would probably be, for, for a young person, the kids not watching this video, someone who does want to become an elite athlete, whether it's baseball, football, cricket, whatever it may be, well, what's probably the one bit of advice? You mentioned hard work, not just relying on your talent, we both know, you know, it will get to a certain point yeah. you know, to go on beyond that. So what would be the one thing you'd share with, you know, one of the young kids watching now? I think for me personally, just being a, when I was younger, I was not always the big kid. I was pretty much the little guy and I didn't grow till my last year eight, under 18s. And I think that, I, you know, having my mom as a teacher, wanted me to concentrate on school and here I am wanting to become a major league baseball player. And I... You know, I tried to entertain her idea, but at the same time, I had this like desire to just want to prove everyone wrong that kind of didn't give me that chance early on. And I think that that, I guess you'd call it willpower or desire to, to, to succeed. I think that I really fell back onto that to really push me through the tougher times. And, um, you know, also being an Australian in America, I'm, they would always say, oh, Australians play baseball. Are you sure it's not cricket? And, and you know, I just had this like Sticking fire in my out of my butt trying to like prove to them that we can hang with America, and you know that that really pushed us through. Yeah. So just on that, how far are we? How, how far is the Australian group? Obviously, you know, America being the pinnacle. How far would be the Australian team to? Well, it, it all depends. If they put their absolute top squad out there, you know, their multi-million dollar players, I think we'd be a bit hard luck to to do well against them. But yeah. um, I mean, we're not far off in the way of, uh, there was a stat a few years ago that there were more Australians per capita playing professional baseball than there were Americans. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that just proves as a sporting nation that we are, yeah, we, yeah. we hang pretty well for better than less people than California. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, in all sports. And uh, I so, think that we're a pretty good team. Yeah, yeah. That's growing here, isn't it? Yeah, baseball, it is. Isn't it? It's something you've noticed the last, what, four or five years? Yeah. Oh, for sure. This yeah, yeah. league started up about five years ago, and it was, you know, a few Americans here and there, and... Uh, I think as the years have gone by, more Americans are coming over, and the ones that think they're just going to come here and roll us, yeah. they're the guys that go home real quick. Yeah, okay, yeah. You know, they, they don't understand that there's a lot more passion in our game than maybe in America. You know, yeah. they, they play for the money a bit more over there, and whereas we play for that, you know, that, that yeah. just we want to win, the yeah. pride, you know? And um, yeah, I think that they find out real quick, and you could ask any of the Americans we got in this team, they'll all agree with me that yeah. you can't just walk in here and expect to just kill it here. Yeah. You're going to be hard pressed. So. So just a last couple show before you yeah. uh, get going here, mate. Um, adversity. So obviously you faced a bit of it. Um, how do you cope with it? Wow. Um, I think my number one form would be just bury myself in baseball. You know, I think if it's off the field things, the things that I can't control, um, whether it be losing someone or, or just depression in general. You know, I think that if I can take that out of my mind and have to put myself in another world where I can't think about that and think burying myself in, in trying to get better on the field and that's uh, that's would be number one and obviously music's another you know it really helps you through some tough times and I know people that have struggled with depression and even thought about hurting themselves of Amity Affliction is a perfect example you know their message is great and there's more than just those guys there's plenty of bands out there that are really trying to push the the role more the the issue of you know love yourself and and you, yeah your life's yeah. worth more than what you think it is and yeah. that you know that's the once it's over it's over man and, and you're hurting a lot more people around you than than what you actually think so yeah. all right mate so i think you might touch on this a little bit before but maybe just a recap so let's look at the next six months for travis Blake. what does that look like 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're obviously married. Mm-hmm. Um, you got kids? You got uh, I have a child from a previous child. marriage. Previous marriage um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's back in America, the 11 year old boy. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, I miss him a lot. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, what's next, mate, now? Well, you know what? It's all kind of up in the air right now. I'm yeah. kind of living in the moment, trying to do what I can to earn another job. Yep. Uh, I'm sure something will come along. You know, I'm, I'm throwing it pretty well, and um, you know, have a bit of a track record, so I should get another at least opportunity to play again over there. Yeah. But even if I don't, um, I'll stay in the sport, maybe on the coaching side of things, or yep. scouting, or something like that, and. Um, you know, uh, just try and keep the life going along. Chug yeah. on. I mean, we're looking to hopefully start our family here really soon. And well, it was going to be next one. Is home, home in America, or is it? Is yeah. It is your wife's American? Yeah, she's yeah. from she's from the Bay Area in California, and has quite a big family yep. and uh, a lot of siblings that have just had their own children. So she's not too keen on moving to Australia yep. anytime soon. No, she, she wants to be around her family, but um, you know, I've, I've spent so much time over there. As it is, uh, it feels like home to me. When I come home, I, I love it here, but uh, there's just no life really for baseball no. in, uh, over here. So, um, yeah, but the work is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure. Well, mate, I couldn't thank you enough. Oh, so thanks glad for we met you yeah. yeah. backstage that time. Yeah. And all the best, and no doubt you'll, um, you'll get another contract, mate, coming up shortly. And- uh, kick some ass and represent us Aussies well over there like you've done the last 17 years, was it? Yeah, well, this will be my 17th, yeah. 17th year, so all the best, mate. Cheers. Appreciate it, Jake. Appreciate it.